As a new online seller, one of the first decisions we need to make is what business model to adopt for our new online business. Now for that, we have two main categories that are pretty much taking over the internet. The first is the dropshipping business model and the second is Amazon FBA. Now, if you're not sure what these two are or you do have a basic understanding but you're not sure which one to choose, don't miss this video because here I'm gonna talk about the differences between these two and at the end, you'll know exactly which business model to run for your online business. Quick intro and let's go. Welcome back, I'm Liran from AutoDS and as you know in this video you're going to learn about the differences between Amazon FBA to the dropshipping business model so that you can make the right decision for your online business. Now before we get started I want to remind you guys if you want to learn from community members, from people who have been selling online for years now, then I highly advise to join our Facebook community group and our new Discord channel, both which have lots of online sellers with tons of experience who help each other out on a daily basis. So join those channels and don't stop learning. Now, as you know, in this video, we're going to talk about the differences between Amazon FBA, which stands for Fulfilled by Amazon, to the dropshipping business model. Now, for those of you who are trying to clear the confusions in your minds, let me make that easier for you. You can also dropship on Amazon. This video does not talk about Amazon dropshipping, but rather the fulfilled by Amazon business model where you actually hold inventory inside your Amazon store, actually holding physical stock and selling them using the fulfilled by Amazon model, as opposed to the dropshipping business model where you don't have to have any inventory whatsoever. So I just gave you a small clue about the differences, but of course there's a lot more to go over. So let's go ahead and get started. And by the way, everything that I'm going over in this video, you can also read about it in the blog article, which I'll leave a link to right below this video. So let's get started with a brief explanation of the two. So first of all, what is dropshipping? Dropshipping is simply a fulfillment model where you can host your online store, you can have your own online store, it doesn't matter where you're selling at. You can sell on eBay, on Shopify, on Facebook Marketplace, on Facebook Shops, on Wix, on WooCommerce, on BigCommerce, and like I mentioned, even on Amazon and so many other selling channels. So dropshipping is simply a fulfillment model. It's an online business model where you can fulfill your orders without holding inventory in the first place. So in other words, I can have an online store, I can list products on that store, and I don't even have these products in my inventory. I'm simply listing them using dropshipping suppliers, and as soon as I make a sale on my store, I'll go ahead and purchase that product from my supplier, ship it directly to the end customer, and I, as the dropshipper, get to keep the profit between the selling price, how much I sold the product for to the customer, how much I paid for it using my dropshipping supplier. That is basically how the dropshipping business model works, and it's great for anyone who wants to enter a low risk and high reward model. Now, on the other hand, we also have Amazon FBA. Now, unless you've been living under a rock, which I'm sure you haven't been, Amazon is the biggest e-commerce giant known to man available today. And one of the things that really helped Amazon grow to the monster that they are today is that anyone around the world can have an online store and sell products using Amazon's fulfilled by Amazon service. Now what this means is you as the seller can purchase inventory. In other words, you go to a supplier and you work on a product, he creates it for you and we're gonna go through everything soon. He creates a product for you and then you're gonna have to buy, purchase a minimum order quantity, let's say 100 units of some dog collar, and then you're gonna have the manufacturer or a third-party delivery provider transfer the goods from the manufacturer's warehouse to Amazon's warehouse. Once it reaches Amazon's warehouse, you will create the product IDs for it, you will create the product pages for, that, for those products, and you can start selling it using the Fulfilled by Amazon service. Now, Fulfilled by Amazon means that as soon as you get an order, Amazon will also fulfill that order for you. So you have physical stock in Amazon's warehouses and when you get an order, one of Amazon's workers is gonna take that box and they're gonna ship it directly to your end customer. Now what's good about this is that Amazon has really fast shipping speeds, especially if you're shipping to the United States. So if you're using Amazon US's warehouses and you're shipping to the US audience, then of course those audiences are also gonna enjoy Prime membership, which means they're gonna get their packages between a day to two days and they're gonna be really happy about that. And even if you have product returns, if a customer wants to return a product that they purchased from your fulfilled by Amazon store, then Amazon will take care of the return process for you and you pretty much don't have to do anything. So Amazon is fulfilling your orders, shipping out the products and handling the returns. And when it comes to the drop shipping business model, well here you didn't purchase any inventory upfront. So like I said, as soon as you sell a product, you simply have to go to your supplier's website, purchase the product and ship it directly to your buyer. And if you have a return, you'll have to go to your supplier's website 
get a return label, of course, if you're eligible for one. And if you're not, then make sure that the buyer also knows that. But in this case, you're gonna have to reach out to the supplier, get a return label, send it to the customer, and make sure that they return the product. Once they return it, the supplier will give you the refund, and then you can, of course, refund your buyer. So those are some main key differences between the dropshipping business model to the fulfilled by Amazon. But let's dive down even deeper and understand more which is better for our business. By the way, if you haven't done so yet, now is the time to subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can always learn about the next step in running a successful online business, whether you're dropshipping, whether you're holding inventory, no matter what suppliers you're using and no matter what selling channels you are using and step up your e-commerce knowledge. So checking out this chart, Amazon FBA versus dropshipping, which is better, we can get a bit of a better understanding on how everything works and what is better than the other. So Amazon FBA, we can offer free shipping to our buyers. Now, of course, we can also do so using the dropshipping business model, but in this case, with Amazon FBA, all of our buyers will get all of their products using free shipping because your products will be eligible for the Prime service and of course millions of US customers use Amazon Prime. Next you get immediate organic traffic which is great as soon as you list a product on Amazon you can get intentional traffic because people go to Amazon to buy things. So millions of people open Amazon every day. They search for a product that they want to buy. And if that falls under anywhere near your product title and it's relevant to the product that you're selling, there's a high chance that the customer is going to see your product, click on it, and of course purchase if it's right for them. So as soon as you list a product, it can sell and you don't even need to market it if you don't want to. Now, of course, marketing is going to help. It will require a budget and it is going to get you more sales, especially when done correctly. And when you are selling a product that's in demand to the right target audience, audience, but that's a little bit more advanced. Even as a new seller, as soon as you list a product on Amazon, it could already start selling organically, meaning you didn't have to pay money for marketing to get people to see your product. Now, when I compare this to the dropshipping business model, it really depends on what selling channel you are using. So for example, if you're dropshipping on eBay, then you're also gonna get free organic traffic because eBay is an online marketplace and people go to eBay to search for whatever they wanna buy. So as soon as you list something on eBay and somebody searches for a product, there's a high chance that, of course, they're gonna see your product on the first search results page, click and purchase. But in other selling channels like Shopify, Wix, WooCommerce, you don't have any free organic traffic because those are not online marketplaces marketplace, they are simply hosting service providers. You are still going to have to get people to see your product and you may have to work hard on marketing or on blog content to get organic traffic to your website. In any case, on Amazon, you're gonna get immediate organic traffic. And the third advantage for Amazon FBA is that they have efficient order fulfillment. So as you know, as soon as an order comes in, you as a seller, you don't have to put up with sending out the package and shipping it to the buyer's address and making sure you don't mess up somewhere along the way. And of course, process the returns. Here, Amazon, as I explained, is going to ship out the product for you and process the return if needed. And that will all save you time from having to do it yourself as a seller. So when selling using Amazon FBA, your main responsibilities as a seller will be to research the right products to sell, negotiate with the right manufacturers. Now, if you're wondering where to start off with, you can start off in places like Alibaba. Alibaba has thousands of ma manufacturers. Many of them are verified. And you also have buyer and seller protection when negotiating and when purchasing products from them so that you don't have to worry about your money getting lost or not being fulfilled correctly. But that's just one quick example. We're not gonna dive deep into that now. Now let's talk about the dropshipping business model. So here you can sell products without buying any inventory, which of course is great. This is especially good when you're just starting off, you haven't researched any products yet, you don't know what's selling well in the market, and slash or you have a budget issue and you can only start with a certain amount of budget, which is relatively small, then the dropshipping business model is perfect for you because here you don't really have to spend money before you actually start making money. So whether you're a beginner or not, the dropshipping business model is still a good business model to adopt because you can test out the market, see what products are selling before even thinking about maybe purchasing it to your inventory and hoping for those sales there. Because if you purchase a product without doing any research, at least without trying to sell it using the dropshipping business model before, you have no idea how this product is going to perform. And if you're gonna put down a couple thousand dollars on it to manufacture and purchase a minimum order quantity only for it at the end to sit on Amazon shelves and not sell or at least not sell quick enough. That's just going to be a huge waste of time and money, even though you are going to 
learn from it, but it's better to be fully prepared and to know exactly what you're about to dive into. So it's much better to be able to test the products using the dropshipping business model because those products didn't cost you any money. You just test out a whole bunch of products and if they don't sell, you can easily remove them and add new products instead. Test out different categories, different niches until you start finding your best sellers. It's all about testing and analyzing until you start making those sales. But the best part here is once again that you can test out these products, test out the market before spending any money. And this is a really valuable pain point that inventory or fulfilled by Amazon that model simply does not have. Next, it is a low risk model, especially since we don't really have to put up with any inventory upfront. We don't have any upfront costs. We can simply start a free online store, start to test the market, start to sell, and only then we'll start to think about investing money, upgrading our subscriptions if we're a dropshipping on a marketplace, or putting more money on marketing so that we could reach a larger target audience and rake in more sales and profit. Finally, the dropshipping business model has increased scalability. That is because you have all types of dropshipping tools that can help you with things like price and stock monitoring, automatic orders, price automation settings, quick product importing, customer service, support for virtual assistants, a multiple business dashboard, and so much more. Of course, I'm talking about none other than AutoDS, the best dropshipping automation tool that we have today, but I'm not here to talk about that now. But with the use of these tools, you can easily scale your store because everything is pretty much being automated and you'll only have to work on the most important things like product research, even though you can automate that too, or at least half of that while you continue testing out your own products and conducting your market research the right way. So some of the pros, some of the advantages of the Amazon fulfilled by Amazon service. Let's face it, Amazon is a reliable and a trustworthy brand. It's been around for a while. Of course, they're not going anywhere and Jeff Bezos is just getting bigger and bigger as time goes on. And even if Jeff Bezos was out of the picture, Amazon is a monster that's still going to run, still going to open up new features, new warehouses, and they're always gonna keep getting bigger and better. So one of the biggest pros here is that you are going to work with a reliable and trustworthy brand. The second pro fulfilled by Amazon is that you're gonna get lots of reorganic traffic. We already talked about that. You are selling on a marketplace, and when you're selling on a marketplace, these marketplaces like Amazon and eBay already have millions of customers who are coming on an intent to purchase. It's not like when they go to Google, and when they search for something on Google, there's a the high chance that they're not searching for something to buy. But when they're coming to Amazon and they're searching, that is for an intent to purchase. And Amazon is gonna give you these customers. So just sell the right products that are in demand and the customers will make their way to your store. Lots of organic traffic, which once again is a great thing to have. Then they also have the efficient order fulfillment with that fulfilled by Amazon service. You don't have to worry about your packages. They're all gonna send out to your buyers within one or two days, as I already mentioned. And they're also gonna get free shipping and free returns using the Amazon Prime service. Some of the cons or the disadvantages of the Amazon FBA business model is that you will need an upfront investment for your product catalog. Amazon also has a lot of strict rules and regulations, which is pretty normal for pretty much any marketplace, but that's pretty much how it goes. It's not exactly your store, it's Amazon's website and you just have a small store inside their website. Whereas when you're selling on places like Shopify, Wix, WooCommerce, and all of those online hosting platforms, here it's not a marketplace you may not get the organic traffic, but there aren't as much rules and regulations as there are when running an Amazon store. Amazon can come and lock your account in just one day, whereas Shopify can't really do that unless you're being sued by some big company because you did something really, really wrong. And I just hope that's not gonna be the case for anyone here because I've been doing this for years and I've never even been close to that. As long as you're not selling copyrighted materials and patented products and things that you know you're not allowed to resell. But once again, using automation tools like AutoDS, you will be warned before adding a product that you're not allowed to resell. So of course you can make your decision if you wanna risk it all there. In any case, let's get back to it. Another disadvantage of using the Amazon FBA service is that you'll have to put up with Amazon's packaging. So it's kind of going to be hard to brand your product. You can brand it, okay? And, and it can come in, a, in branded packaging, but on that branded packaging, you're gonna have the Amazon box once again. So it's annoying for some people, others just decide not to mind it, not to look at it, but that's another thing to note there. And finally, seller fees and FBA fees. So that is something that we haven't talked about yet that we will talk about soon. How much is it actually gonna cost us to run this business? What are the monthly charges? What are the permanent charges? And what are the temporary charges? We're gonna get to all of that soon. But at the end of the day, we are gonna have to put up with seller fees and the FBA fee, which is relatively higher than other marketplaces or other forms of online selling business models. Talking about Amazon selling fees, 
what are they? So let's go over them. When you'll first start your Amazon Seller Central account, your account will have to get verified. So what you wanna do first of all is head over to sellercentral.amazon.com and click on sign up to start your Seller Central account. Even if you have an Amazon buyer account, you're still gonna have to open up a new seller account. Okay, so you're gonna go to sign up. In my case, I already signed up, so I'm gonna go to log in. And as you can see, I'm signed into the Amazon Seller Central. Now, granted, I'm not selling anything yet. I don't have any orders. I don't have any listings. I don't have any sales or any balance. But this account is active and I can start selling at any given moment on either Amazon US, Amazon Canada, or Amazon Mexico. But this is just to show you what the Seller Central account looks like. Now, one of the first things that I noticed when I logged into this account is that Amazon automatically put me into a $39.99 a month subscription, which is their professional plan. Now, this is for established sellers. I am not an established seller yet. I just opened and verified my account. For those of you who are wondering what is Amazon Seller Central account verification that you're gonna to have to go through, well, you're gonna to have to give out, of course, your real information. So your name, last name, address, phone number, and all of that. And then you're gonna to have to also prove that you are who you are. So you're gonna to have to send them some uh, ID or some utility bill just to prove that your address is where you say that it is. And of course your ID so that they can see that you are who you say that you are. If you live in the US, you will have to provide them with a social security number. And at the end, at least in my case, they had a video call. So they have a video call with you and then they'll ask you to show the bank statement and slash or your ID at the same time while answering some really, really basic questions. And that is pretty much it. You will be approved and you will get this dashboard right here, the Amazon Seller Central. And as you can see right here in the My Services page, in the account settings, you can see that on my Sell on Amazon account, right now my account is an individual account, meaning I'm not gonna pay a monthly subscription because I changed that after realizing that Amazon started me off with a professional account automatically. So if you decide to start off with Amazon FBA, make sure that as soon as your account gets verified, you log into your account settings and you change it from professional to individual. This way they're going to waive that $39.99 a month fee, but they will charge you 99 cents for every sell. Now, of course, once you're making enough sales, in other words, once you're selling at least 40 items per month, then you're already gonna pay Amazon $40. So in that case, it's better to move over to the professional plan and not pay them 99 cents for every sale. But until you make it to that stage, make sure to change your accounts to individual. So that's the first fee that we need to know about as soon as we start off and we'll want to downgrade that to the individual plan, which means we will not pay a monthly subscription, only 99 cents after we make a sale for every sale. Now, besides that, Amazon is also gonna charge us transaction fees for every time we, ma we make a sale. This referral fee can be anywhere between five to 20% depending on the product that we're selling and the category. You also have this page right here showing you the fees and pricing, how much Amazon is going to deduct from every sale depending on what category you sold that product in. Okay, so here you have the referral fees table. And for example, I'm just gonna click on electronics. So in this example, if you're selling a PC cable, they're gonna charge you a 20% fee for that. If you're selling a camera lens, they're gonna charge you 7%. Now, the way that this usually works, like how do we have a jump from 5% to 20% simply goes by how much sales they're making and how much competition they have in that category. The higher the sales through rate and the more competition a category has, the higher the fee Amazon is gonna charge you for every time you make a sale because they know that sales are gonna come easier in the cables, electronics, PC, and wireless category than it is in the camera and camcorder category, which is a little bit harder to sell. So they're gonna charge you less for that. Okay, so that's pretty much how it works. And if you guys wanna link to this referral fees table, just leave me a comment right below this video and I'll send you the link here so that you can learn all about it. But that's another important thing that you need to know about. So you have your monthly costs. If you have an individual plan, it's not gonna cost you a monthly subscription. And if you have a professional plan, that's 40 bucks a month. Then you have the transaction fees, which can be anywhere between five to 20%. And besides that, Amazon also has storage fees. So because you are storing products in their warehouses, they of course are going to charge you depending on how much space you are taking. And of course, other things like package dimensions, weight, and so forth. And also, if you're not able to sell a product for a long time, Amazon is also gonna charge you for a long-term inventory storage fee. So if you're not completely ready to sell yet and you don't know what product you're gonna sell or you don't have a good idea of how much it's going to sell after doing product research and analysis and all that, if you're not sure about all these things, I would definitely recommend to start with the dropshipping business model first just so that you don't burn time and money until you learn about what works. And when you find a product that's starting to work really well, then take that product, go to Alibaba, negotiate with a seller and get them to create that product for you, send it to the Amazon warehouse, and then start selling that product from your stock. 
Start with one product and slowly work your way up. But when you're drop shipping, of course, don't start with just one product. Start with lots of products as much as you can and test the market accordingly. All right, so really quickly about the advantages of drop shipping, advantages and disadvantages, and then I'm going to walk you through how you should start your business step by step. Okay, so pros of drop shipping sell online without buying any inventory. We've already went over that. So we have an online store. It would look something like this. Okay, so I have my online store. I'm gonna click on products. Here I can see all of my products. Of course, this is using the AutoDS system and it doesn't matter whether you're dropshipping on eBay or Shopify or Facebook Marketplace or Wix or WooCommerce or pretty much anything else. We support many selling channels and we were always adding more and more in time. But here, for example, you can see all of my online products here on the left side. You can see that they're in stock right here and their prices, profits, supply, marketplaces and so forth. So here I have all of my products and I can just keep testing them out. I can always add new products by just going to my suppliers websites and adding them to my stores in just a couple of clicks. I'm not going to demonstrate it now. We have all of that on our YouTube channel, but that's not the point of this video. The point is that here you can test out all of these products and see whatever sells. Now you can have thousands and thousands of products right here and everything is being monitored automatically. So as soon as the product goes out of stock on my suppliers website, it's also going to go out of stock on my selling channel. Same thing for the prices. And I can also automate my orders as soon as they come in. The system can handle that for me and many, many more things. But basically here I can test out all of my products using my suppliers just keep importing products from my suppliers to my store from my suppliers to my store and see what starts to sell slow movers will get removed after most likely one month while i will continue researching for new products and adding more products similar to those that are selling for me this way i can always test the market while continuing to scale my store with proven products that have sold time and time again while continuing to research the market for more and more bestsellers and removing the slow movers rinse and repeat until you grow more and more month by month and year by year so i can sell all of these products and i'm not holding any one of them in my inventory, which means I have a low upfront investment since I really didn't invest in anything up until now. Super low risk because I'm not taking any risk with these products. If they don't sell, I can just remove them from my store. No storage and overhead costs. Scalability, especially with dropshipping tools or actually only with dropshipping tools because if you're doing everything manually, you can't really scale. And business automation, which is what we just talked about. Now, some of the disadvantages of the dropshipping business model because nothing is perfect. Here we do have a higher competition than we will on Amazon FBA. Now, does that mean that there is no competition on Amazon FBA? Definitely not. There's a lot of competition there. But since the dropshipping business model is easier to adopt, you will notice a higher competition there. Now, we can easily counterattack the competition by adding more suppliers, more dropshipping suppliers, because not every dropshipper is working with every single supplier and all of their products that they have out there. So it's easy to find new bestsellers, start new product sale trends, and continue to test the market when you have tens of millions of products that you can try every day and remove as many as you want and retest new products as much as you want target new audiences, test new creative strategies, and do so, so much to differentiate yourself from the competition and really outshine all of your competitors, stand out, and you don't need to be cheaper than the whole competition. That is one of the things that I love about the dropshipping business model. You can sell at high prices, make your 40 to 60 to 80% profit, and I know some who are profiting even more than that, all with a low risk and high reward business model. So yes, there is a high competition, but there's a high competition pretty much everywhere you go. You just need to know how to work around the competition and with the dropshipping business model, it's relatively easy. Another disadvantage is that we don't have control over stock availability and shipping times. So we're not actually holding our products in stock, meaning we don't really have control over the stock availability. If it goes out of our stock on our suppliers websites, then we're also going to have to bring it out of stock on our websites or of course automate that process through AutoDS. But in any case, you are subject to the stock status of your suppliers. Whereas when you're holding your own products in stock, after you purchase them in advance, you know exactly how much you have in stock and how much you can sell. Now, you can counter this one by, once again, working with multiple suppliers. You will learn in time that some dropshipping suppliers have similar products to other suppliers. So if one ever runs out of stock from one of your suppliers, but you want that product to stay in stock because, you know, it was doing so well on your stores, you can simply add that product or very much similar products to that one using other dropshipping suppliers. Lack of control over product quality. Since you're not the one who is manufacturing your products, how can you be sure that this product is made of high quality? Well, you want to work with high quality dropshipping suppliers who have a proven track record of selling high quality products. And if you're dropshipping from a marketplace, or in other words, from a store that has lots of stores, all right, a, a website like AliExpress, it's an online marketplace where you have thousands of sellers and dropshipping those items from real Chinese sellers. But the good part here is that today we can easily analyze the products that we purchase or that we add to our stores 
before adding them to our stores. Since websites today, our dropshipping suppliers can offer us product reviews for the products that we want to resell on our stores. So this way we can see that customers are buying it, that it's in demand, and that the product is made of high quality. So if you do the research the right way, you're gonna easily come across these products and avoid selling the low quality items with bad reviews that are simply gonna give your store a bad reputation and increase your amount of returns. And finally, Dropshipping requires time and patience that's required for building your own website. Now, if you're dropshipping in marketplaces like eBay, then you don't need to create a website. You just sign in, upload your first listing, and you can start selling. But in other places like Shopify, Wix, WooCommerce, BigCommerce, and so forth, you need to know how to create your own website from there. Now, you can use services like Fiverr to find freelancers who will create a quick store and a cheap one at that. But if you don't have a budget, or you simply wanna learn how to do it yourself, you can do that. And by the way, we have full tutorials on our blog page and on our YouTube channel on how to create a dropshipping store from scratch, no matter what selling channel you wanna use. So if you wanna do it by yourself, we have all of the guides to help you with that. If you want links to them, just let me know in the comments below and I will happily send them to you. And that pretty much wraps up the disadvantages of the dropshipping business model. So to summarize, Amazon FBA, free shipping, quick order fulfillment, and you have Amazon's credibility, dropshipping, sell without inventory, low risk upfront investment, and scale with dropshipping automation. With Amazon FBA, you have inventory management. With dropshipping, you don't, unless of course you're using a dropshipping tool like AutoDS. The risk involved in Amazon FBA is higher than the dropshipping business model, since here, you're putting your money on products that you hope will sell, Whereas in the dropshipping business model, you're not putting any money on the product, so you can easily remove and replace them and test others. And the upfront investment is relatively high because you have to purchase the products using Amazon FBA and zero or minimal using the dropshipping business model. No need to explain why. So the verdict in Amazon FBA versus dropshipping, dropshipping is the clear winner here. That's simply because there's a less investment required, low risk, no storage fees, and you can easily test, test, test before you start spending any money. But like I said, you don't have to start and end your online business career with dropshipping. You can start with dropshipping, find your best sellers, and then use those best sellers. For example, here, I'm gonna go to my orders page, okay, using the dropshipping business model. And then I could say, okay, I've got this uh, spring onion slicer here, which sold for me pretty well. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go to Alibaba, okay, and here I'm gonna search for spring onion slicer. Okay, now I wanna find a manufacturer who's going to create this product for me. I wanna look for one that's actually unique, one that I haven't seen being sold on Amazon, and here I can start negotiating. Like this seller right here, Amazon Hot Selling Kitchen Multi 12-in-1. So this seller here already has experience dealing with sellers on Amazon, which is good, cause you know, he'll know how to ship it there and there won't be any problems. So Amazon Hot Selling Kitchen Multi 12-in-1 Manual Mandolin Fruit Vegetable Cutter. Here you can see how much he's charging per set. He has a minimum order quantity of just 20 units, which actually isn't that much, but because because of the shipping price, which could come out to a couple hundred dollars, you will want to have more products in that shipping container because that way it'll reduce your average product cost. But in any case, you can see right here. So let's say this product, again, sold for you well here when you were drop shipping. Now you want to purchase some of this and sell it using Amazon FBA while of course continuing to drop ship so you can continue testing out the market. So here you can see that this is a verified supplier, which once again is good. This guy has experience. The seller also verified himself on Alibaba. His store rating is 4.7 out of five. He has almost a 90 99% on-time delivery rate. He has a response time of about or less than two hours and he made over almost 200,000 transactions, which is pretty crazy for just being on this platform for two years. But everything here is verified by Alibaba and Alibaba will give you buyer protection when you purchase from him. So if you don't get what you wanted, you will get your money back. Now the minimum order here is 20, as we know, but we don't have the shipping price yet. So even if we purchase 20 products, anywhere between 20 to 200 is gonna cost us $5. So $5 times 20, is $100, so almost $100 since it's $4.99, but let's say $100, and then you're gonna have to pay another, let's say $100 or $150 shipping, so it could come out to even $250 for just 20 units, which isn't that good. But you're gonna pay the same shipping price if you t purchase 199 units, so that is drastically going to improve your average product price, and that is what you wanna go for. Don't go for the minimum order quantity, but go for the most that you can get using the same shipping price, so that your average product cost will be as low as possible. And and after you do that, you're gonna to go to your Amazon Seller Central account, go to your catalog, click on add products and start adding your listings here. And you'll also need to create a shipping plan. So in your menu, you're gonna to go to inventory, shipments, here I can see my shipping queue, so if I have anything on the way, I could see it here. But I could hover over shipments right here and click send to Amazon. Now here I'm telling Amazon, hey, I got some products that I wanna send to your warehouse so that I could sell it using my seller account. So you're gonna have to fill in the information here, like what products you're gonna sell, 
what marketplace you want to send it to. And finally, at the end, Amazon will send you a print box label. Stick that print box label on your packages and they will make their way to Amazon. If you need more help, of course, you can talk to Amazon support for that. And you can also get help from these sellers on Alibaba who do have experience dealing with Amazon sellers, so they will make your life easier. That is the most recommended way to work. Start with the dropshipping business model, test out the market, and those best sellers that you're gonna get from dropshipping, go to Alibaba or other manufacturer websites and start negotiating with manufacturers who can create a similar product for you. Now, when you create a new product, you do wanna make sure that it has new features, make sure that it stands out from the competition and that it's just simply a little bit different than everything else that you have out there. It'll be easier for you to outshine your competition this way and of course, choose the right product. So make sure that it's making sales on your dropshipping account and make sure that you understand exactly why this product is selling. So maybe it's not the color, but maybe it's a certain feature that it has and then you can recreate this product using that feature, upgrading it, and making different colored variations and so forth. I hope that this video helped you understand the differences between dropshipping and the fulfilled by Amazon business model, and that you now know which one is right for you and how to start it the right way step by step. Let me know if you have any questions below this video and I will be more than happy to answer. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and good luck with your dropshipping or your fulfilled by Amazon selling channels.